morning and welcome to Coffee and Prayer at Crossing Crown Lutheran Church and School. Now here's my coffee cup. Can you read it? PLTS, Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary. Brian Brasovic is a student there. And if I turn it around, magically it becomes California Lutheran University. So what does it say on your coffee cup? Good morning, I'm Pastor Ted Peters and welcome to worship on this, the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Let's open in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples. And you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Tandy Whitaker reported recently that she was in a grocery store and saw someone with a shirt that read 2020 sucks. Yes, it's been a difficult year on many counts. Myrna Kapler, our indefatigable church council president, has watched the monthly income go up and down as our congregation faces so many unexpected challenges due to COVID-19 and related matters. So planning for 2021, what a task, what a challenge. Well, thanks to all of you who mailed in your 2021 pledges. There they are in a basket sitting on the altar. Let's have it a moment of prayer. The Lord be with you. Lord God, our congregation is made up of people who love God and love neighbor and love the fellowship of Cross and Crown Lutheran Church and School. We ask you, through us and whatever other miraculous sources you have hidden and ready to reveal that we get supported in our ministry, that more that we advance our ministry, that we serve you in worship and we serve one another in love and service and we pray especially for the precious children in our school that they learn about Jesus, how to read the Bible and how to handle themselves as mature citizens in their adult life. And we pray especially for those who are alone during this COVID crisis, that they know that they've always got the Holy Spirit to keep them company and our love and concern to keep them company. Heal those who are sick, comfort those among us who are grieving and lead us into a bright and shiny 2021. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Amen. The psalm for today is Psalm 90, God's eternity and human frailty. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, 
or before you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger. By your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. Here ends the reading of the psalm. The epistle for today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When you say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness, so then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Here ends the epistle. Our Gospel for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I've made five more talents. His master said to him, 
Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, thou good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then, the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own plus interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For, it all, for to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. And as for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That ends today's Gospel. Well, is it time for another sip of that java? The Parable of the Ten Talents. I've often wondered why the landowner got so upset with the servant who buried the talent and then gave him his money back after he'd returned from his long trip. Don't you think that his reaction was excessive just because he couldn't earn much money? On this reading, I think I finally figured out why? Note how it was that the slave with the one talent approached the conversation, right? The landowner says, well, tell me what happened while I was gone. And instead of simply saying, well, I, you know, I didn't do very well. The other guys, you know, they doubled their money, but I buried buried this one and all I can do now is give you back what, what you originally had. No, he doesn't, he, he doesn't say that. He says, Master, you're a harsh man. You practice ruthless capitalism. You make profits where you don't deserve it. You're a rich person who exploits the poor. You engage in economic injustice. You hold stocks in international corporations and you bribe senators so that you can get big military contracts. And he just lays into the master and in effect, he's blaming the master <laughs> because he didn't make a profit. It's the master's fault, not his. I think that's the reason the landowner got so angry. Remember when the landowner distributed the money in the first place, he did it according to talent or ability. So 
the slave who got the one talent was getting <laughs> what the master thought would be fitting to his abilities and uh, he screwed up <laughs> even if even though he had only one talent but the problem is he tried to cover up his boo-boo by blaming the master you've heard me say many times if we go back to the garden of eden in the book of genesis we we get an insight into what human sin is and making a mistake, making a boo-boo, being a failure, falling short, missing the mark. All of these things are sort of naturally human, but what we lay on top of it is an excuse, a self-justification. And sometimes that self-justification includes blaming somebody else, scapegoating somebody else. So in this case, the slave scapegoats the master, the generous master who gave him the money in the first place and gave him an opportunity to show what he could do so that he could get a promotion. The generous master is said to be guilty for the slave's failure to make a profit. I think it's fortunate that the word talent is used here. Yeah, I can refer to money, but boy, talent is a broad, broad concept, right? You and I are born with talents. Yeah, sometimes our genes predispose us to certain abilities. I've got a daughter named Elizabeth. She was born with genes that dispose her to music. We could tell that already when she was just able to walk. So each one of us is born with genetic talents, some with more and some with less. There may be different, but God expects us to be good stewards of whatever talents we were born with. I think that word talent applies to the loving family that, that we were born into or the education that we got, the professional and economic opportunities we've had uh, during our life. All of these things the master gives us to see whether or not we can be good stewards. And yes, some are given more, some are given less, but we all are given by God an opportunity. An opportunity to earn God's pronouncement, thou good and faithful servant. Now, if you and I fall short, if we miss the mark, as the New Testament uh, refers to sin, God does forgive us. But the one thing God can't tolerate is that if we blame God for our boo-boos, our mistakes, our, our, our shortfalls, um, yet that is our propensity, isn't it? So if God gives us either one talent or five talents, our response ought to be, well, thank you, <laughs> instead of trying to tell God what an SOB is, right? Well, I don't know if it's mere coincidence or providence or what, but today, this Sunday, is our Pledge Sunday, and we just had a little prayer to dedicate our own dedications to the life and welfare of our congregation for 2021. Yeah, in a symbolic and actually a material way, this is our stewardship of the talents that we've been given. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if we make an investment in the life of Crossing Crown Lutheran Church and School, if that investment might grow, mature, and make a profit in the divine 
pastoral ministerial service sense of making a powerful impact on our community and on those who need love and care in our community. So that might be our way of behaving like the servants with two talents and five talents. Well, at any rate, thinking about what Jesus teaches and says, that's a good way to spend Sunday, the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Well, let's toast with a sip of coffee. Please join me now in our prayers of intercession. The Lord be with you. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us. We pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, on the world, and all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with a passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations. Refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. O Holy Spirit, you inspire the prayers arising from within our souls. In your mercy, hear our prayer. You can say hear our prayer out loud. We come to you, O God of resurrection, with feet still stuck in the world of the cross. Around us and among us, people are dying now by the hundreds of thousands, victims of the rampant COVID-19 disease. Like a horse from the apocalypse, this plague gallops through our community without regard to whom it brings grief. As you brought refuge and strength to the psalmist, bring us a portion of that strength here and now. O oh God, you are our sword and our shield. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and we praise you for the beauty of the natural world, for the roar of the Pacific pounding California's beaches, the towering snow caps donning the Sierra mountains, the engineered symmetry of Sonoma County vineyards, and the simple warmth of the sun that breaks through the morning marine layer. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where our exploitation has caused ruin. Oh God, you are our rainbow of promise. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, oh God, for peace and justice in the world, for a full embrace of racial equality and compassion for concord during this time of political rivalry. For the heads of state, the legislators and our local civic leaders that they enact wise procedures that lead us into a wholesome and prosperous future and help make us survive the COVID disease until a vaccination can afford us safety. Oh God, you are our mighty fortress. In your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray, O oh God, for all who are in need, for those who suffer for the faith, for those who are poor, hungry, and homeless, for those who are sick, and for those families in which someone is awaiting death. We pray especially for those in the Cross and Crown family, Debbie, and Scott, Barb, Bob, Alexandria and family, Linda, Bill, Pam, Bob, Dutch and Becky, Charles, and Richard. And in terms of long-term healing, we think of Joanne and Carol, Gabe, Chris, Chris, Roger, Sawyer, Ed, and Mark. For those who are homebound, Robert and Leona, Dick and Dorothy, Ruth, Pastor Leon, Ginny, and Norma. Oh God, you are the healer of our every ill. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for all who have died in the faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your everlasting life where sorrows will be no more. Into your gracious and mighty hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me in praying out loud the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Well, benediction leads to one more sip. Bye-bye. <laughs>